Thanks for tuning into Airs TV. Don't carry bitterness. Um, you know, in Romans uh, 3.14, we talked about this. So the scripture told us, we talked about this last week, Matthew 5.44, it says, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. So now, what, see, again, I need to use love, but I'm thinking I need to use love because, oh, Melanie, you love me, so I'm going to love you. Yes, but I don't really need a whole lot of love for her. She loves me. I need love from the, for the unlovable. Because the unlovable is placing a demand for love. He says, love your enemies. Pray for them that curse you. Right? Amen. And that despitefully use you and persecute you. Are we doing that? That's an opportunity for love. Listen, man, we, we, we had a leader that showed us the way. He got on a cross for some people that were spitting at him, trying to beat him up, breaking his bones, uh, whipping him with a chain and meat was coming out of his back. And he kept on moving. I didn't take enough stripes. That was only 28. I need 40. That wasn't enough. He, we would have played dead. Oh, no, no. Not only am I going to get on the cross, I'm carrying it too. When he could have called down legions of angels. That was his response to hate. This is a job for love. Are we thinking that? We go, oh, hate? You going to come at, oh, tch, I ain't the one. Yes, you are. Because you got pulled out of your path to prove something to who? Especially somebody hating. You're going to use up any level of your energy for someone hating? You could use all that to elevate. You see? So, so just something to think about, right? So the scripture says um, that you heap burning coals on a person's head when you uh, love them as opposed to hating on them. And see, so hatred is this. This is why it's so dangerous. We have to walk in love. Because what, what? Faith worketh by love. So faith, that love creates an atmosphere for faith. And we see way beyond the circumstances. But if I'm in hate, I'm blind. All I see is the circumstances. Right? Hatred is the armor of unbelief. Hatred is the armor of unbelief. So the adversary is trying to get us in a hateful environment because he knows we'll speak, we won't speak words of love. So then we won't have an atmosphere for faith, so all we'll see is circumstances. Think about any time you're bitter, think about how, how, how bad you feel. I mean, if you're honest with yourself. Just think about, how, I mean, you feel bad. Now you may try to come up with excuses. Well, if they had to say such and such, you know, you go away. Remember in the early part of the marriage, so, so I went through stages. The early part of marriage, I would go out and shoot ball if we had an argument, but most of the conversation was, well, she hadn't been no, no business doing such and such. Well, you know, if she just wasn't doing whatever she was doing, then that would, that's crazy. Don't put the quarter in the machine. You don't want to play the game. You know, I mean, I'm going through all. My whole conversation was justifying my position. But that wasn't love. Because even if she was tripping, love Perfect love cast out fear. Love covers a multitude of sin. So there was a demand for love, which I had to discover that. At first I was like, you, you, you act like love, you get love. Otherwise, this love will stay in my pocket. When I see love, you'll get love. <laughs> you know, like treating somebody like a kid. No, no, you're going to feel the heat every time you trip. How'd I feel? How'd I feel? Uh-huh. Yeah, you're going to act right now. No, I'm just, I'm just creating an incubator for more bitterness and craziness. So we're just going to love. I'm just going to love you. I told my, grand, my grandson, I don't know if you talked to him, but my grandson, uh, he woke up this morning. First, he tried to say, because he messed up yesterday, so he had to go to bed a little early. So when I came in, he, was, he just kept talking to me. So that was, I'm sorry without saying I'm sorry. Like some of y'all do. All right, so then second stage was, hey, Grandpa. He's still feeling me out now. Like, oh, when is he still upset with me? Which I wasn't upset with him at all. I just had to correct him. Because God chastens on me loves. So, so, did, so does Grandpa. 
<laughs> right? So then we get in the car. He says, I'm sorry, Grandpa. I said, oh, no, no, I forget you. I love you. I told him that every, I tell him that every time I do something. I love you, but I have to do this. I have to do what's best for you. Yeah. That's right. right? See, that love creates a better atmosphere than that crazy. You know, we, we just got to try it because we don't see that armor of unbelief. Hatred blinds us. And you notice you you like everything be going wrong when you're mad. Yeah, I don't notice that. Well, if you didn't notice, God told me to tell you this morning the reason why everything's going wrong, because you carry that you stubborn. And then some of y'all, because remember, I told you we talked we talked about this probably two years ago, that panic room. Some of y'all done created that panic room. Yeah, I think it's a safe place. But you run in the room and you don't realize what you left outside is the craziness. And it's getting worse and worse and worse while you're hiding in the panic room. <laughs> I'm safe in here. Yeah, but you got, you're going to come out. And when you're coming out, it's crazy. As opposed to walking in love. And then you, you, you'll take the, the lie, the deception, the fear, you'll take it to your grave sometimes. They, if, if I don't say nothing, they don't see that I'm in denial right now or I'm just afraid. Nobody can see me. Like we went to the, uh, we was going to the King's Art Center in, in Ohio and uh, met this guy. Uh, not, we knew the guy, but he brought his son with him. So his son, it was like, this is it was like a, a, a tree. So his son was standing like this. You don't see me. We're all looking at him. Well, he's like, and you know, we're talking to him. He's not responding because he, he's rolling like, they don't see me. Because I'm not looking at them. They don't see me. Now, now his, Minister Mar had a face like, guess what? But that's how God's looking at y'all. Because you're not focused on the fear, the denial, right? The selfishness. You're, you're looking like, God don't see me. Nobody sees me. <laughs> the person I'm talking to, they have no idea that inside of here, I know I'm wrong. And, and if I give a good case and I scare them away, then I don't have to take responsibility for my denial. Wrong. Everybody sees it. Just like we all saw the little kid. Everybody sees you. <laughs> Amen. Like surprise, newsflash. It's obvious. <laughs> So you're trying to save face and you're looking worse. Whoa. Come on down. Come on down. <laughs> you could have played it off. He's on the edge. <laughs> He's on the edge. Right. All right. All right. So, so look, look at 2 Corinthians 3. See, God is love. God, God doesn't just operate in love. God is love. Amen. So when I operate in love, I'm, I'm expressing more of God. And remember, Jesus, Jesus went out to, he was, he was on his way. He was on his way to, uh, to raise Lazarus from the dead. So he's on his way. And now, so, like, so that means he has a goal. He has a mission. Somebody died. You know, you know how y'all be panicking just when you hear something, some bad news. This person's dead. And you know, you Jesus, everybody panicking. Oh, I can't believe this. Jesus said he was coming. He ain't here. All this stuff, right? On the way. No, it, was, it might not have been Lazarus. It might have been the centurion's daughter. Either way, he's going to raise somebody from the dead or take care of somebody. Take my word for it. So he's on the way, and there's a crowd. And the crowd knows that Jesus just been healing folk. So everybody, and you read through the scripture, one time when he was in a town, before he came back to this town, people could just touch his, the hem of his garment and be healed. I mean, multiple people. I mean, we know the story about the woman with the issue, but she didn't just go touch the hem of his garment. She didn't think of that. She, people had done it when he was in a town before. So what he did was he decided, she decided, if I could touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole, right? All right, so he had compassion on her. The love to heal her went through his body. He said, virtue has gone out of me. The love has gone out of me to heal someone, Right? He was so filled up with that love, it helped him to raise somebody from the dead. See, it went through him, but it also went to him. That's 
why you have to be reaching out in love. The same love that you use to touch somebody else touches you. Mm-hmm. It's going through you to them. You see that? So, so, so that's why we have to flow and operate in love. And, and now, again, God is love, right? And God loves people through our vessel. But the adversary is saturated with that hate and that fear because he wants to blind you. So he's in your ear going, I can't believe they did that to you. They don't care about you. They didn't think about you. Oh, you mean to tell me they're going to do that for such and such and they didn't do that for you? Mm-hmm, they don't care. They saw you. They saw you. They saw you. How come they didn't say hi? Mind you, you ain't say hi either. But how come they didn't say hi? They don't care about you. You know what? They ain't trying to help you. They trying to take something from you. That's what they trying to do. So what you need to do is tear down their credibility before they're able to take it. Destroy them! Destroy them! That's hate. See, but if if I'm walking in love, even if they're trying to destroy me, I win. So I'm like, hey, might be trying. They tried to destroy Jesus. All they did was assist him in sitting on the right hand of the Father, having all power. (laughs) You can't be stopped if you're walking in love. But anyway, 2 Corinthians 3 14, it says this. It says, but their minds were blinded until this day remained of the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. And if you drop down to chapter four, verse four, it says, in whom the God, little g of this world, has blinded the minds of them who believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Trying to blind us. See, Jesus said this. Don't, he's basically saying, don't let hate have such a great effect on your life. Go to John 15. What he's saying is like, uh, my wife always uh, quotes the scripture, I believe it's in Ephesians, but it says, don't be ignorant of his devices. Basically, basically what that scripture is saying, don't fall for that again. No, no, not again. I can see, I can see Jesus, the Holy Spirit and God, the angels, and all the saints, the, the, the cloud of witnesses and Hebrews, sitting back going, no, are you serious? You falling for that again? And you fall for it, like, with a confidence. Then you done fell for it, but there's something's telling you, oh, no, I'm good this time. Based on what? Do you, you have to get to a point, and I, I will tell you this, uh, people tell me stuff like, you know, oh, oh you don't eat sweets. Yes, I do. Or, or, or I've heard this comment. You don't like sweets. That's definitely not true. I love sweets. Or what's the other one? Um, oh, you don't like that kind of music. That's not true either. I used to live for that kind of music. It's not about what I like. It's about what's best. It's a difference. And so... If you don't see me go to the club or listen to certain things or we're sitting at a restaurant and you go, why is he praying in tongues so much because of the music? Or if I'm at a game and they're playing the music, I'm praying in tongues. That's not because, uh, oh my God, these wretched sinners. It's because I don't trust myself around that. Listen, I live for the music. You know what that means? Ate, slept, and drank music. I schedule my college courses around music. Oh, can't take that course. The master mix come on from 12 to 2. So his class will have to be either before 12 or after 2. Remember uh, WBLS and 98.7 KISS? Crystal from Jersey. So, so, so I, I schedule my classes around that. Thanks for tuning into Airs TV. The completion of this video or entire audio can be accessed at our website at www. H-E-I-R-S-C-C dot org or on Air's CCC channel, YouTube, and Air's radio via SoundCloud and iTunes. Donations can be given at our website. Thank you. Remember, at Air's, we believe we're just what you prayed for.